I'm sure you all are familiar with the stereotype that Appalachia is home to a bunch of reclusive inbred mountain people. Most Appalachians find this offensive and for good reason. Most of us are not inbred. Most of us have never met or even seen someone like that. But I have. I live right down the road from one such family, the Mundys. For over a hundred years, the Mundy family has lived at the house at the end of the road, each generation more inbred than the last. I don't want you all to picture their home as some old dilapidated Victorian manor that sits like a stain in its subdivision. This ain't like the Burbs or Edward Scissorhands. Make no mistake, the road I live on is unpaved and long. Manufactured homes and the occasional cabin sit on large lots spread up the mountain. These are lower to middle lower class families. There are a few retirees with new pickups, but overall there ain't much money around here. My home sits about halfway up the road. On a fall day when the trees are bare, I can look up the mountain and see part of the Mundy house. Now I said not to picture it as an old dilapidated Victorian manor because it's not, but it is old and dilapidated. It's larger than the rest of the homes on the road, but it's box shaped. A civil war era built, the paint is faded, the roof is in disrepair, there's junk spread across the property, windows are broken and covered by plywood. It's seen better days, that's for sure. Actually, as the story goes, the Mundys were somewhat normal back in the day. The home was built in the 1800 by a confederate veteran. He was married to his cousin, which I agree ain't normal, but back then it wasn't that frowned upon. Plus, I think they were second or third cousins, something like that. Anyways, Mr. Mundy started a local general store. It proved to be pretty popular and Mundy became a successful businessman and a major fixture in the community. He even dabbled in the local politics. Mundy and his wife had eight children, which was a typical amount back then. Five boys and three girls. A couple of boys died young of illness and one of the daughters was murdered by a jealous lover, whom the remaining brothers dealt with violently and with finality. Of the five remaining children, Levy was the golden child. He worked the general store and had interest in politics like his father. However, unbeknownst to the parents, Levy and his sister Sarah were romantically involved. Mama Mundy died early of what was most likely cancer and old man Mundy subsequently fell into a deep depression. He took to the bottle pretty hard. One night he went on a drunken hike and died after tumbling down the mountain. Levy, being the favorite, inherited the store and now that the parents were no longer around to disapprove, married his sister. Now, back then you could marry a cousin and most people wouldn't mind, but marrying your sister, well, that shit has always been abhorrent. Levi and Sarah were too in love to feel shame or embarrassment any longer. So they put their relationship out in the open for everyone to see and that made folks pretty uncomfortable. So the locals stopped shopping at the Mundy's general store. As you can guess, no customers meant no money so the store closed down. You might be wondering what happened to the other Mundy's. Surely they weren't okay with their siblings marrying each other, bankrupting the family business and creating little inbred babies in the house they grew up in, right? Wrong. They knew about Levi and Sarah long before the two married and get this, they joined in on the indecency. I'll spare you the details, but story goes that there were nights that people heard some blood curdling love making taking place in that house, a real family affair. Sarah gave birth to many children, not all of which survived, and of the six that did, they almost certainly were not all Levies. Although they were all his blood in one way or another, when a family is so intermixed, the individual stories begin to blur. I do not know what happened to Levi and Sarah's siblings. Some stayed at home, others moved away. I can only imagine that there's some other Appalachian road with a Mundy family on it. But all I can tell you about now are the Mundys that live on my own road. They don't come out much and when you do see them, it's like a Bigfoot sighting. You want to take a picture to prove that they exist but you also don't want to get too close. They don't drive, so they don't go into town. I don't know what they eat. They don't have electricity or plumbing. They have a well on their property, so I guess that's where they get water. There's five of them up there and one really old lady. I've seen her less than the others, maybe only three times my entire life. I saw her when I was about nine years old. Us kids used to sneak up the mountain to try and catch a look at the Mundys. Our parents were ignorant of this, of course. One afternoon, we got about 30 feet from the house. The front door was open, so we got a peek inside. 
there was a long hall that appeared to go from the front of the house to the back and standing in that hall hunched over was the old lady and she was looking right at us we immediately ducked down the mountain and ran home we decided the consequences of disobedience were worth telling our parents about the old lady they weren't happy but i'll never forget the concerned look on my father's face as he looked up the mountain like the old lady's presence somehow made the situation more disturbing the second time i saw her i was 17 my dog had gotten loose and caught a scent that took him up the mountain my heart sank when i saw he was going towards the mundi's house i reluctantly took cheese and found myself on the property it was evening time the sun hadn't fully set nobody was outside that i could see and i knew if they were i would have been in danger people had wandered on the property before and barely escaped with their lives the mundis were extremely hostile to trespassers i whispered loudly and desperately to my dog but he was hooked on a scent he went to the side of the house weaving around junk that i ain't sure how they obtained children's toys car parts empty bottles and cans my dog came to a halt to sniff whatever odor and i snagged him by the collar and as i turned to rush him home there she was she was sitting in a dirty old chair it wasn't on a porch or any spot where it would make sense she was just sitting in the yard amongst the junk I'm often respectful even when it's against my better judgment so my first instinct was to apologize and tell her I was just retrieving my dog she did not respond she simply stared at me I averted my gaze and promptly fled the property she looked to be about 90 years old at the time and aside from a sort of witchy old face the other thing that struck me were her clothes they looked like clothes i had seen in pictures of women from the 1800s the third time i saw her was a week ago and to help you understand how weird that is i'm nearly 30 years old now so in other words i saw a 90 something year old over a decade and then last week i saw her again not impossible to live so long but pretty rare right especially in such poor conditions it was late at night i was sitting outside drinking a beer and looking at the stars when i heard the shuffling of feet coming down the dirt road i sat up and sure enough i saw shadowy figures i could tell right away that these people weren't right their gait was awkward their posture was weird my heart skipped a beat when i counted five of them it was the mundis They walked right past without looking at me. I was too shocked to move. I ain't ever seen them come down the mountain before. I watched them continue on down the road. When I heard some more shuffling from the direction they came, it was the old lady. She had a long white dress on. I couldn't see her feet, but I heard them kicking up dirt and rocks. She looked almost like she was floating. But here's the part that really gives me chills. As she hovered in front of me, she stopped. She turned and looked directly at me and without warning let out a soul piercing scream. She wasn't scared although the scream itself was horrifying. No, this was something different. This was a call. Out of my peripheral I saw the other mundi sprinting back up the road. Their run was awkward like their walk but while their walk was sort of clumsy and slow their run was quick and powerful I took off for my door and stumbled inside I locked the door grabbed one of my dad's old pistols and shut off the lights my parents were startled out of bed by this nightmare and dad rushed into the living room with another gun drawn I shushed him and waved him over to the window where I was speaking out the blinds. The old woman had stopped screaming the second I had gone indoors, and now the mundi stood side by side staring at my home. The only light was from the moon, which was not full, but nonetheless, this was the best look I had ever gotten of the mundi's. Three men, two women, and the old lady. They were all deformed, some worse than others. They looked like patients you would find in an insane asylum. They looked like sub-level inmates. Other inmates lived amongst white tile and cotton sheets, but these guys looked like they would have been housed in a wet stone cellar. Too horrifying for anyone to see. My dad gasped when he laid eyes on the family all lined up on the road. That's the old lady I saw when I was a kid. I told him. I asked him if he had any idea what her relation was to the younger ones. which considering how inbred they are is like asking someone to figure out where a circle ends what he said still baffles me dad looked at me real serious and said that sara i figured there must be another sara the one that married levy would be at least 140 years old now not levy's wife should be too old i argued but dad just looked at me 
He doesn't say much, but when he does, it's precise and true. My dad ain't one for wasting words. The Mondays eventually turned and headed back down the mountain. I wanted to stay up and watch them return, but they never did. At least not back the way they came. But I've seen them since upon their proper team. They must have climbed the back way, which is quite a challenge. It's steep and there ain't any roads. I can't imagine that old lady being capable of accomplishing such a task. I kept thinking back to what Dad told me. My logical mind tells me that there's no way a woman that old exists, let alone would even be capable of walking. And I ain't ever heard an old lady even half that age with the capacity to let out such a loud scream. But there's something that gets me, makes me think that she truly is Sara. The Mondays look inbred. Their faces and bodies are contorted, but the old ladies is not. At least not beyond what you would expect from aging. From what I understand, Sara and her siblings were in strange looking. Their parents were in closely related enough to muddy up the gene pool. There ain't any records on these folks. They stop after Levi, Sara, and their siblings. However, nobody ever found any death certificates for that bunch either, which ain't a surprise considering the Mundies are as reclusive as they come. They are born on the mountain and they die on the mountain. They sure as shit ain't sharing family events with anybody outside of that immediate household. And if you are wondering why social services or some other government agency hadn't stepped in, well, that's a mystery as well. Perhaps it's because there's just no record of them existing, and until recently, nobody saw them outside their property. We would all just stay away from the end of the road and pretend they didn't exist. Live and let live, I guess. However, what we discovered this morning has made me reconsider that saying. First thing I do when I wake up each morning is get out of bed and open my blinds to let the sunlight in. Upon opening them, red light flooded my room. My eyes hadn't fully woken up, so my initial thought was that there was a wildfire. I stepped outside to take a look and found that it was a clear day, blue sky and all. So I knew then that it was the window itself that was red. As I got closer, that's when I saw the coagulation and bits of what appeared to be hair or fur. The entire window had been smeared with blood. My family is fine, don't worry. The police came out and took a report. They were pretty apprehensive about questioning the Mondays. Told me that the Mondays don't mess with no one. They even argued with me and said that it was most likely someone I knew playing a prank. One officer even accused me of doing it myself. Fuck them. I need to know who the old lady is and why ain't there any young kids. I find it hard to believe that this generation of mutants is the one to break tradition. Maybe I'll find something that will convince somebody to end that nightmare and move the Mondays to some place that ain't here. I'm going in that house.